Insector, Windup, Dino Rabbit, Chaos Dragon, Dark World, Hero. These were the six decks that made up the 2012 national format. But one deck remained that we still have yet to cover, and it sent fear throughout the community because time was running out. In this series, both MBT and myself will be traversing the sands of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s history. Each episode will take a deep dive into Yu-Gi-Oh!'s past formats and unlock new strategies as new sets become available. Strap yourselves in because anything is possible. Welcome to the history of Yu-Gi-Oh!! If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the description and use code SEMO5. And clicking the TCG Player affiliate link before you shop helps support us to provide you with more amazing content. All right, I know this isn't the shirt of shame, but it really needs a wash. Cut me some slack. If I started winning, then I wouldn't have to deal with this. Anyway, this is Dino Rabbit. Now, the real story of this week is Simo's List, the final countdown top that scared everyone going into the national season. But that doesn't mean that the other decks that comprise the metagame didn't evolve as well. Sure, Windup looks pretty much exactly the same, but we've shown you just how different Insector and Dark World look from their earlier counterparts. Dino Rabbit maybe underwent the most changes of any deck, eventually coalescing into this build right here. This is Daniel Nunnally's second place build from YCS Chicago, and the finals was a Dino Rabbit Mirror, so it's not particularly surprising that by this point people knew what they were doing. This looks a lot cleaner than the one that Simo played against Synchro Centric a couple of weeks ago, and it's not hard to see why, maxing out on powerful hand traps like Effect Veiler, not playing cards main deck like Maxi that were very good but not particularly strong in decks that have a lot of back row, and full Solemn Suites plus a Starlight Road for some very specific corner cases. I like this list a lot more than the first place list, which is why I'm playing it, and let me go through the individual cards. First up is 3 Effect Veiler, then 1 Gorzy Emissary of Darkness, Triple Jurak Gwaiba, Triple Rescue Rabbit, a Sand Gen, 3 Tour Guide from the Underworld, Triple Kabazals, and Triple Saber Source, 1 copy of Book of Moon, 1 copy of Darkhold, Triple Forbidden Lance, once Priority went away, Rescue Rabbit was suddenly a lot more susceptible to removal spells, you have to actually be able to activate an Ignition Effect, and as a result, cards like Forbidden Lance ensured that it actually did so. 1 copy of Heavy Storm, 1 Monster Reborn, Double Mystical Space Typhoon, and a Pot of Avarice, Double Smashing Ground, this deck actually does have a difficult time getting over large monsters, two bottomless, a mirror force, three solemns, a starlight road, and two torrential tribute. In the side, we've got double snowman eater, spirit reaper, the third MST, nobleman, double nobleman of extermination. Good against dino rabbit, but also good against what Alex is playing. Prohibition. This is a weird inclusion, to be sure. It's going to be really funny to call Final Countdown if we ever find it, but this is also not terrible against a significant amount of the meta. A, a lot of windups combos, for instance, revolve around Hunter and Zenmaity and Shark. A lot of Insectors combos require you to open exactly Dragonfly. It isn't too ridiculous to think that this might be played over something like the Shadow Imprisoning Mirrors that are very common in sideboards during this period. Double Dark Bribe, Double Dimensional Prison, and Double Macro Cosmos. In the extra, we've got a Chimera Tech, an Ally of Justice Cataster, a Stardust Dragon, two Dolka, three Lagia, Double Leviar. Leviar is specifically good in this deck because it can bring back the Rescue Rabbits and then make more Evelzars. One Leviathan Dragon, one Giga Brilliant, one Utopia, one Roach, and one Zen Mains. So with that, let's jump into the game. <laughs> Usually Joseph gets to play the jank in these series, but today we are bringing one of the most hated decks of all time to the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! Final Countdown. Now, the reason we have to play this is because this was actually a legitimately viable threat during this time in Yu-Gi-Oh!'s history. A lot of the cards you see in this deck are now currently limited as a result of this deck actually being a threat at this point in time. Some of the cards may have actually gotten hit later because they may be used in other decks like, you know, sort of Exodia Turbo List and the like, but the fact still remains that this is one of the funniest decks that is actually competitively viable Viable, and I think we would be remiss for us on History of Yu-Gi-Oh! if we didn't cover this and give it the respect it deserves, because everyone else who was going and playing in the 2012 Nationals around this time was fearing this deck, and this deck was first after Swiss at either the National or like an SJC or YCS right before that National, so 
that's pretty damn good, right? It even managed to top these events as well, so I think we have to give it a shot. Let's go ahead and do the card by card. First up, three copies of Card Card D, an all-star out of the set. I believe it was Galactic Overlord, but I'm not 100% sure on that. This is Pot of Greed, ladies and gentlemen. Basically, during your main phase one, if this was normal summon this turn, you can tribute this card, draw two cards, and it becomes the end phase. You cannot special summon the turn you activate this effect. Now, what's funny is that the original player of this deck, Tyler, said that this is one of the worst cards in his deck, and he would rather swap it out for Jar of Greed because this card was just an Effect Veiler magnet because a lot of decks are playing Effect Veiler and you have no other Veiler target. So game one, this card is probably never resolving. Then we have a few more monsters in the form of Gores just to make sure we can kill some stuff off the field and just hopefully not die. Morphing Jar to refill our hand and Sangen to search either Card Car or the Morphing Jar. We also have three Swift Scarecrow, which can be searched with the Sangen and Swift Scarecrow is one of our ace in the holes because this card, when our opponent's monster declares a direct attack, we can discard this card negate the attack and end the battle phase. There are very few cards that interact with this specific effect, so we want to use all of our trap cards that we're using to hide behind before having to resort to using Swift Scarecrow, because this is the most likely card to resolve out of all of them, and this is going to guarantee us victory. Then for the spells, one dark hole to clean up the board, triple final countdown, because this is our main win condition. I can't believe this was ever at three for as long as it was, but if you've never seen this card before, this is one of Yu-Gi-Oh's alternate win conditions that actually was okay. Pay 2,000 life points after 20 turns have passed after you activate this, counting the turn you activate this card as first turn, you win the duel. So your turn is turn one, your opponent's is turn two, and it goes back and forth like that for 10 full cycles until the game is decided. Then we have three gold Sark to search our final countdown. If we were to final countdown active, we can actually search something like one day of peace to buy us more time or dark hole as well to clean up the board. Then we have three one day of peace, another card that is limited and very well should be because this card is very broken. Each player draws a card and neither player takes damage until the end of the opponent's next turn. There's very few types of cards that can interact with this. And so this is another one of your cards that you really just want to hold on to to the last possible second because you're going to get the most mileage out of it once your opponent tries to bait through all of these. One day of peace is almost going to guarantee you're going to make it to the next turn. It also draws you a card, so it replaces itself. It does come at a minus, but it doesn't matter because as long as you can just have more ways to protect yourself, you're going to be fine. Pot of duality to find our final countdown, but to find anything we need in a pinch and triple up start goblin. The thousand life point gain for the opponent is actually relevant for one of our traps here, Hope for Escape. If your opponent's life points is at least a thousand or higher, pay a thousand life points, draw a card for every 2,000 points difference between your life points and your opponent. So you could possibly be drawing three or four cards with this card, making it one of the best draw cards in the entire deck. Continuing with the traps, we have one of the worst cards ever, but for this deck, it is actually incredible. Frozen Soul. If you've never seen this card before, you can only activate this card when your life points are 2,000 lower than your opponent's, at least. Skip your opponent's next battle phase. Now, what's fascinating about this card, what I never knew about this card prior to actually researching this deck, is that Frozen Soul actually stacks with the effects of cards like Thunder of Ruler and Threatening Roar. Because Threatening Roar and Thunder of Ruler don't allow the opponent to actually have a battle phase, and Frozen Soul skips the next battle phase. So let's say, hypothetically, we set a Frozen Soul or a Thunder of ruler and a threatening roar, right? Well, what we can do is if Joseph were to heavy storm us, we can chain both of these cards. He can't attack us this turn, but he also can't attack us next turn because Joseph never got a battle phase this turn, and this card skips the next battle phase, essentially buying you two full turns worth of time to draw more cards, find more ways to set up and not die, and make sure your final countdown resolves. So this was a neat little interaction with this card and something that actually caught a lot of people off guard. We have the three threatening roar and the three Thunder of Ruler, as well as the three Roboku to then wrap up the deck as our just main cards to not take damage. The side deck's quite interesting. We have cards like Golden Ladybug in here. This card during your standby phase, you can reveal this card and it will remain revealed until the end phase, gain 500 life points. This is actually needed if our opponent starts to catch wind of our game plan and our life points fall below the 2000 life point threshold to activate final countdown. So Golden Ladybug, although it has anti-synergy with hope for escape, actually allows us to get back over the threshold to activate this card if we do not see at turn one. Lava Golem's in here to get rid of problematic monsters, like specifically against Joseph's deck, Lagia and Dolka, because Lagia is an Omni Negate and that is problematic, meaning we have to burn some more cards more rapidly. And so if we identify this, we can just drop Lava Golem on Joseph's field, then he loses that negation. Heavy Storm and MST are anti-side for our opponent's sideboard, because they're most likely going to side cards like Royal Decree, Prohibition. These are the cards that as a final countdown player you're worried about, so you want to bring these in games two and three most of the time. Then Poison the Old Man as 
well as Secret Barrel are in here for some burn options. Uh, Poison the Old Man, while it can burn, also gains you life points akin to the Ladybug, so that's also a nice utility for it as well. But if your opponent's burning life points on like Solemn Judgments and the like, you can just use these and maybe finish off the game. Your opponent's going to be clogged with their hand and board, and Secret Barrel may be able to steal a win out of nowhere. So that's Final Countdown, and I gotta admit, I cannot believe this deck was as feared as it was during the time. I can understand why, because you look at the top decks during this time, such as in Zector, such as the hero deck that we played last episode, that both of those decks, just by comparison, really don't have a lot of answers here. Dino Rabbit probably has a pretty decent matchup because of Logia and Dolka exactly, and then we have a deck like Wind Up, which can just loop the opponent turn one anyway, so maybe that's probably your worst matchup if I had to guess. So it had a matchup spread that was actually pretty reasonable and just was something that people were heavily fearing and heavily preparing for in their side decks. I'm sure Joseph's deck is no exception. Guys, I cannot wait to see how this one is going to play out. As long as we can final countdown Joseph, we have achieved our objective. We're trying to stay out of the spirit of shame. So ladies and gentlemen, let's not make you wait any longer. It's time to duel. It's the final countdown. I can't wait till I get completely copyright striked for that. But yeah, I don't think they're uh, going to confuse you with the, uh, the actual <laughs> singers. I got to tell you. I'm, I'm hyped, buddy. Uh, this is this is a rare opportunity in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh that we get to play a deck that like on the surface just looks like absolute garbage. But this was like a real deck by 2012 standards. Yeah. And um, man, I'm, I, I look like an idiot uh, over the last couple of weeks. I'm like, but we're not going to play that because we don't want to play it. And then yesterday you come up to me and go, Joseph, I really want to play it. <laughs> so here we are. <laughs> We have to. We're doing a disservice to the audience if we don't, because this is actually like a real deck. Yeah. Like this wasn't just something that like someone scraped together last second and just happened to do well with. There's actually lots of theory into this deck as to like why it succeeded and did so well during this period in time. And it's also just like, such a one-off deck that I feel like even though it is like this flash in the pan, we have to just cover it. Otherwise it's, 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 it, it wouldn't be right. And plus, it's going to be really fucking funny, too. So. Yeah, well, you know, it might be funny for one of us. So enjoy your uh, your potential free win. I will, 100%. Let's go ahead and shout the patron. It is Brian Walkley. Thank you for the support. Are you happy that you supported us doing this, Brian? Brian, are, <laughs> are you pleased with what's going on today? Buddy, you going to lift uh, lift some fingers for me? Or yeah, do you have a fingers. new method? Oh, I got Okay, fingers. all right. I'm, I'm going to go with odd. How? I was like, oh, I'll pick I'll pick an even number because he'll think it's 20, but nope, it was odd. It was odd. What what was what was the thinking behind this one, buddy? Uh, it was it was 3, as in the number of different types of dinosaurs I am playing at 3. I see. I thought it was 1 and you're going to flip off the camera for fuck you for making me play against this deck. That I considered doing it, but I did not want you to get demonetized. Okay. Well, you know, this wouldn't be the first time. Good luck, buddy. Uh I think you're definitely going to need it after this one. I'll go to main phase 1 and I need to figure out how I want to do this. Just go ahead and put the counter right here. Oh, uh, perfect. Let me know when you uh, uh, when you fire the <laughs> the final countdown. Uh we're trying. We're trying. Okay, so we're going to kick things off with Upstart Goblin. I'm going to give you some life points because I'm a nice co-host. Oh, I'm sure that'll matter too. Then we're just going to go ahead and normal summon everyone's favorite, Card Card D. Sure. It's the first time we get to see this bad boy. Uh, this card is kind of neat. It's kind of neat, right? It's Pot of Greed, essentially, if you want to give up a half your turn. I think I'm just going to go ahead and set a card, and I'm going to fire off the card card and draw two if that's fine. Uh, okay, so real quick question. Now... I know the answer, but how does this interact with Effect Veiler? So Effect Veiler will in fact negate this card. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have the Veiler? Really? How interesting. I yeah. do. Wait, what? Uh, it so does? Why does it negate this? There's someone angry on the forums saying, Card Card deactivates by tributing itself. So how can Effect Veiler target a face-up monster on the field and negate its effects if it's in the grave? The response... The card effect activates and resolves in the same place. On field. If you target a yep. card card D with effect failure and attributes itself, the effect is activated, resolved, and negated all on the field. Da 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 da. Enjoy your two cards. I appreciate it. Uh, so I will. This is the end phase because I had to card card. Uh, Tyler specifically said in the deck profile, I would rather play Jar of Greed than card card D. I can't Jar of Greed. You uh, can't. Let's begin can't. with a card. I hope you don't veiler a rescue rabbit. Uh, I don't think I'm capable of rescue or uh, veiling anything in my deck, but go ahead. All right, let's go for it. Uh, we're going to get two copies of what is the 
shittiest one. I'm gonna go for Jurak Gwaiba. I think you probably don't have very many monsters I'll be destroying. Uh, I don't think you'll be summoning this off of Rescue Rabbit because it's normal monsters, idiot. I mean, this card looks normal enough to me. What are you calling him, <laughs> abnormal? Just because he's got, you know, flames going up the top of his back? Fine. If you want to use your close-minded definition of normalcy, we will go ahead and get uh, Kabazals. If it makes you feel any better, they have the same attack stat. So uh, It doesn't. So I could go to combat here. Um, I think I'm actually just going to overlay here. Uh, we'll go for a Lagia, and we'll go to combat. I'll get in for 24. I'll take the 24. Oh, we're schmoovin'. All right, I'll set one card. Back to you, buckaroo. And we will draw. That's a pretty good one. I'm going to go to main phase one and fire gold sarcophagus. Yeah, no response to that. All right. Uh, well, there's only one card we can get, and its name is Final Countdown. Now, is Final Countdown limited at this point in time? It is not. It is at three copies. <laughs> Are you sure? I am sure. It's ridiculous. <laughs> sure. Uh, then, uh, staring down Logia, which is kind of annoying, I think I'm going to set and... Uh, yes, I will set two cards face down. Eh, you know what? We'll just set them all. Go ahead. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, that that was actually much worse. All right. I'm going to normal summon Jurak Gwaiba. Jurak Gwaiba is fine. I'll go to combat and attempt to attack your monster. Uh, this is fine. It is Morphing Jar. <sighs> Fuck off. <laughs> oh, my God. We good to draw five, buddy? We'll just set them all. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we're good to draw five, buddy. Uh, do I get to trigger my Gwaiba first or second? Uh, technically, the flipping of Morphing Jar happens before he's destroyed, so you will be drawing cards before searching for Gwaiba. Fine. As long as we don't draw two Gwaiba. Oh, we didn't. Thank God. All right, out he comes. All right, sure. Uh, attack my minion. All right, so this is where I have to start doing math here. So you have... Yeah, so this like, is the weird part. Final Countdown has an activation cost. Now we want to do this. Yeah, I think we'll Waboku here. I will Solemn Judgment the Waboku. Oh, okay. Sure. Uh, That's fine. Do I got anything else? I don't. I'll take 17. And then 24. Egg 24. Uh, that's not good. <laughs> ah, feeling fine. All right, second main. Uh, I'm going to Heavy Storm. Um, see, now I'm wondering how exactly I win this game <laughs> when oh, I can't final countdown. Shame concede and keep me off knowledge of what your back row could be. I am going to shame concede. You got me. All right. Game one in the books. Uh, thank I you actually could have stopped that from happening, but I did not think uh, judgment was in my future. So, yeah, fair play. Well, as uh, autopilot as I thought this deck was going to be, apparently you need to be much more skilled than I had anticipated and anticipate not dying that quickly in the face of, uh, you know, dinosaur beatdown, I suppose. I had a lot of shit, and I was actually ready to go with uh, the Morphing Jar reload that I had. That Heavy Storm actually was completely inconsequential. But Yeah, I figured. Um, <sighs> I, I just wanted to get what I could while I could. Um, no, it's it's kind of interesting. Yes, obviously the takeaway from this episode is your deck, uh, but you know what's really good is my deck. Uh, it turns out that <laughs> uh, the difference between the Dino Rabbit that you played a couple of weeks ago and the Dino Rabbit that's been developed now, it's kind of night and day. All right, let's go ahead and upstart again. This is going to look similar to the first game. You got it. And I'm going to set a couple of cards face down and throw it your way. I'll draw for turn. Anything in standby? No, all good. Uh, I'll go to main one. I'll normal summon Jorak Gwaiba. Sure, he we'll, has returned. We'll get there eventually. All right, I'll attack directly. All right, uh, second main. I'm going to activate Mystical Space Typhoon targeting this card. It was my Mystical Space Typhoon. <laughs> Fantastic news, because now I'm going to activate Prohibition. Oh, fuck! <laughs> I will name Final Countdown. Why would you do that, buddy? That's so mean. <laughs> this deck's board plan for Final Countdown is insane. I have 13 cards to bring in. 13 cards? What right, the fuck? <laughs> All right. Well, uh, probably not winning this one then. Main we'll one? God. I, I'm I'm setting a few and throwing to you. Go ahead. Stand by main. All uh, good. Gee, I don't know. Normal rescue rabbit off the top. Oh, gross. That's pretty fucking good, actually. Um, I'll go for it. We'll get the Kabazals. Yep. I'm not even messing around. No need to go to combat here. Let's just make Lagia. Seems like a good move. Uh, 
And now we'll go to combat. Yeah, that's just how this goes. All right, I take 41. I'm already out of final countdown range again. Oh, no, just You barely. are not. I maybe should have kept the Kabazals, but I, I assume one of these three cards does something. All right, back to you. All right, we'll go ahead and draw. I think it's standby. No. Okay, we'll go to main one then, and I need to figure out how the fuck I'm going to deal with this. I am going to set one card and throw it to you. Okay, standby main. In your standby, I will activate Thunder of Ruler. I guess I don't really care about that, yeah. Uh, I'm going to set one. Set one. Back to you. All right, sounds good. We'll draw. Go to main one. Uh, We will pass the turn. Go ahead. Standby main. Thunder Ruler again. I'll I'll log you this. Okay. Uh, combat. I'll try to get in. Swift Scarecrow. Ooh. Okay. I'm with you. I'm with you. I will go to second main. Ooh. I shouldn't have log you. That's a. We got a big problem here. <laughs> hmm. And now for the first time, I will normal summon tour guide. Uh, I'm not gonna activate the effect. Okay. I'll flip summon Sangan here. I'm gonna overlay for Leviar. I'll trigger Leviar detaching the tour guide. I will bring back the rescue rabbit. That you will. I will banish the rescue rabbit and we'll get two Sabresaurus. I will overlay here for another Lagia. Seems pretty good. All right, back to you. We'll draw. Go to main one. Yep. <laughs> we'll set it. We'll pass. Go ahead, buddy. Stand by main. Oh, main shoot. one is fine. Combat. Get in Before there. Before you leave main one, I yes. will activate Frozen Soul. <laughs> Dog, this card is <laughs> penis bad. This is the worst card I've ever seen in my life. Skips oh, your battle God. phase, buddy. <laughs> I will Lagia in that case. Okay, fine. <laughs> Fair. I will normal Guaiba. I will make the third Lagia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Battle phase. Get in there. <clears throat> I think I'm dead if I don't do this, so I think I have to. I'm going to activate Hope for Escape. I will... Oh, my God. You're dead anyway. What the hell? Uh, I will Lagia, I suppose. Okay. I will Chain Waboku. <laughs> and I will Judgment. Ah, all right. Well, this was fun, wasn't it, buddy? <laughs> you were like, oh, I can't wait to just get completely shit on by Final Countdown. And I just got completely shit on. I had the countdown, too. Yeah. The fucking Prohibition. I don't know why I uh, set the MST, but, you know, I figured uh, I, I would just wait for I will tell you this. Whatever. Wow. Uh, this deck put the fear of God in players. <laughs> if you watch uh, any deck profile from around this time, Pretty much everyone is like, and this is my concession to Final Countdown, and then reveals four or five cards in their side deck. Like, this shit sucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, this one was I on say Double Prohib, Double Dark Bribe, and let me see what else. Uh, Forbidden Lance Main, Extermination. I was like, wow. there's no That's shot. That's deep. <laughs> Oh my god. I will say, Dino Rabbit probably has the best matchup against this deck because of Lagia exactly, right? Because, like, other oh, decks... Wind Up you're... going first is pretty good, too. I, well, that's yeah. true. Wind Up's pretty good as well. Yeah, fair, fair. But, like, if you're looking at a deck like Insector, right? Like, if you Hornet pop the whole field, that doesn't do anything. Dark Arm Dragon doesn't do anything, right? Like, all these other decks at this time just don't really do much. And so Lagia being able to put up negates every single turn, if they can keep establishing more Lagias, definitely gives this deck a fighting chance for sure. And it's so a, I definitely think that helped. It's a weird, like, back and forth to go in the meta, right? Because the conversation on what flavor you want your set five pass deck to be is, is it Dino Rabbit or is it uh, the elemental hero stuff? And the hero stuff is way better uh, after priority is removed, but way yeah. worse against exactly this deck. So if you expect it going into a tournament and you want to play a control deck, Dino Rabbit probably is the better option, uh, but Prohibition Dark Bribe Extermination feels a little like overkill. Yeah, I mean, it got the job done because Prohib was did, all you needed. But I, to. I, we got to do a game. Oh, yeah. We oh, have to. Of course, of course. <laughs> Can I also just start one of these games with final countdown in my fucking hand please I was like say, that would be nice the pro hip dark bribe was really cool but if you had final countdown turn one there's nothing i can do about that right and that's like part of the appeal of this deck holy fuck oh, like I, okay that might help okay we got duality this time okay, so maybe this will get us there oh well. there it is okay now we're gonna at least see this deck uh you know in action a bit so all right so let's put these back uh shuffle that up Putting the counter right in the middle for us, buddy. Yep. Uh, I can't even put counters on this, so I have to do this myself. <laughs> so 
sick. <laughs> All right, uh, so we'll do it, and then I will fire Final Countdown, paying 2,000 life points. Yep. And now we just have to play the game of not dying anytime soon. So I will go ahead and set two cards in the back row. Throw it to you. Turn one on countdown, buddy. All right. Stand by main. What is that? Good luck. I drew MST off the top. I'll go for one of them. I will chain hope for escape and draw one card. <laughs> oh, God. That's really good. Yeah, that's fine. Just jar of greed. Uh, I'm going to normal summon tour guide and activate the effect. That is fine. All right. I'm going to go grab Sangan. Well, uh, I think 2,000 is more than anything I can do with uh, any of my Xyz monsters. So we'll just uh, go to combat here. So I will take 2,000. Uh, that's perfectly fine, too. Interesting. Second main, I'm going to overlay here. We're going to go Zen mains. Seems right. I guess I like maybe could have done 25 if I go Leviathan. No, that's it doesn't change anything. You're still under the same threshold. And I want to reserve the Sangan, potentially, if you have like a Mirror Force. All right, uh, back to you. We'll draw uh, turn two on countdown. Yeah, After yeah, drawing yeah. Drawing here. Let's go to main one, and let's go ahead and set. Uh, what do we want to do? I'm going to set two cards face down. Throw it your way. Turn three on countdown. Stand by main. Ooh, that card's great in this okay. matchup. I'm going to normal summon a Kabazals. Is fine by me. All right, time to enter the phase of the game where I have lethal every turn. Uh, Zen mains attack. Uh, I will, uh, excuse me, threatening roar in main phase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'll continue my main phase then. Uh, will I? No, I won't. I'm just gonna pass here. Okay, sure. Uh, that is turn four on countdown then. I will draw. Go to main one. Uh, I'm gonna hope for escape here. Jesus. Uh, yeah, that's fine. So I get to draw three cards, because oh, card I have... so crazy. Yeah, this card is insane. Uh, that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and fire a duality. Yeah. See what we get here. Oh, well, we don't need countdown. Uh, yeah, what if jar you just, is. What if you take the Waboku because you're already so ahead? Like morphing jar just maybe puts me in the game. I think I'm gonna take the jar actually. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna do that, and next I'm going to set two cards face down. Throw it your way. Turn five on countdown. Stand, uh, stand by. by. I'm going to Thunder of Ruler you. Yeah, no response. Uh, back to you. Okay, turn six on countdown. I will draw. Go to main one. I will set two cards face down and throw it to you. Turn seven on countdown. Uh, rabbit. Rabbit is fine. All right, we'll get him out of here. Uh, I guess I have to go Cobb here. Anything here? This is where it's going to start getting a bit tricky. Nothing here. You're good. All right, we'll go Logia. Makes sense. Uh, we're thundered, right? Uh, no, that was last turn. All right. I'll attempt to go to battle phase. I will threatening roar. Back to you. <laughs> All right. Turn eight on countdown. I will draw for turn. Uh, we are trying. I will set a card and pass it to you. Turn nine on countdown. Uh, I will normal Sabersaurus. Sure. I'll make another Logia. We can negate all Starting this to assemble. stupid crap, but you still might have swift scarecrows. I'll try to go to battle here. Battle is fine. Okay, let's try and get in for lethal. Uh, we will fire Waboku. Uh, I'll log you that. Uh, chain another Waboku. I'll log you that. I will scarecrow. Mm. Yeah, sure. Uh, second main, I'll overlay for Utopic Future Dragon. <laughs> right, that'd be pretty sick. Uh, this looks silly. Uh, no, I'll pass back to you. Okay. Uh, turn 10 on countdown. End phase, I'm gonna hope for escape. Oh, for six? Fuck. It's not for six. It's, uh, it's just three. Okay, yeah. No, no problem. Yeah. I wish it was six. That'd be pretty sick. But, all right. Uh, we'll draw. Standby main, uh, duality. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Ooh, that's pretty good. Pretty I think we'll take the Scarecrow. Yep. Go ahead and shuffle these back. Oh, what do we do now? God, I would kill for Gaga -ga -ga Cowboy to be in this extra. <laughs> I'm going to set two and throw it your way. Uh, I'm gonna uh, turn 11 on counting. Yeah. I'm going to tribute summon Gores. Still with you. Yeah. Uh, we'll try for it. I will... Scarecrow. Uh, I'll set one. Back to you. All right. Turn 12 on countdown. I have nothing else here. I will draw. Ah, one day of peace. Oh, God. Yep. 
Yeah, there's a reason this card's uh, not in the game. <laughs> and it's uh, this exactly. Uh, I'm going to Gold Sark here. I'm going to banish Dark Hole. Yeah, that's fine. Then, uh, do I want Dark Hole, actually? You have a Zen Mains. Yeah. I actually think I'll take another one day instead of the Dark Hole. Yeah, that sounds right. I'm going to... Uh, I don't really have to do much. I'll just pass. We're under one day. 13 on countdown. Uh, I'll Rabbit here. Rabbit is A-OK. -okay. At least we can't find those anymore. Logia. The last Logia, sure. On summon, I'll Torrential. Ooh, interesting. Uh, that's fine. I'll Lance targeting my Logia. Pretty sick. Sure. All right. I'll set one, proceed to end phase, and activate the effect of Zen Mains. Uh, what is your target? That one. This one? Uh, that's a pretty good hit, so what's Thunder of Rule? Oh, so. okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Turn 14 on countdown. We'll draw. Rough. That's turn one on the Sark. Yep. So I get that soon. Let's go to main one. Okay. Logia negate. I'm going to set one. Uh, normal summon card car. Uh, sure. I can Valor this. So it just stays then. Because I actually don't have to tribute oh, it. Because you have to have, do this before I tribute. We may have cheated last time. <laughs> we may. I don't know if it would have affected the outcome in all honesty. But yeah, whatever. It's a difference okay. of eight uh, life points. Yeah. Which, I mean, it could have mattered. Especially with like hope for escape and stuff. But probably not. Um, I will just throw it to you. Turn 15 on countdown. That's very interesting. Uh, stand by main. I'm going to try to go to combat here. I'm going to Frozen Soul in main phase. Sheesh. Uh, I will log you at this. Okay, I will activate another Frozen Soul. Well, you know, when the soul is frozen, you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. fine. I will activate Smashing Ground. Or card car. I, I'm, you know, I'm sitting he, on removal. <laughs> he lived a good life. He lived a good life. All right, turn 16 on countdown. We'll draw. Stand by. We get this one day. Yeah. Main one. We're almost there. We're almost fucking there. Um, we've got three back row. I will activate one day. Yep. Set two, and I will pass. Turn 17 on countdown. Stand by main. Uh, avarice. Yuck. <laughs> Putting all the Logias back. I actually have to put the Saber Sarasauruses back too, because otherwise the rabbits. Oh, because you've gone through you've gone through all the materials, yeah. yeah. Oh, two stinkers. Uh, let's go for Guaiba here. It's at least a monster, sure. Uh, I'm going to Torrential again. Okay, similar to last time. This is fine. I'll go to End Phase and attempt to resolve the effect of Zen Mains. Targeting the new one. Uh, fine. It's a dead final countdown. Ah, all right. Back to you. All right. 18 on countdown. We'll draw. We'll set. We'll set. We'll pass. Turn 19. Stand by main. See, I don't even know what I go into, right? I feel like it might even be Dolka, right? Because you could have a Scarecrow. You've been through two Scarecrows. No shot this deck plays Fader. You'd have to draw into it. I think this is all hypothetical anyway. Let's just go ahead and normal summon Guaiba. Guaiba's fine. We'll set one combat. Mm -hmm. I do know Threatening this. Roar. Oh, yep. You got it, buddy. <laughs> All right. We resolved it. It wasn't clean. I probably fucked some things up, but uh, we got there. I mean, we got to at least show off like why this deck was good. Yeah, you know? no. I'm, uh, ugh, this Forbidden Lance, I was like, oh, this is killer in this matchup. Not a single one of these interacts in a way with Forbidden Lance that I want. It's like, no. well, both. It, it was pretty cool with Torrential, Thunder, though, I will say. Yeah, that's really the only thing it's good for. I was like, oh, there's got to be, like, chains in here or something. Why would you play chains? Right. You're just playing the 15 cards that skip a turn. What's pretty sick is one of the rulings with this that I didn't learn until I actually looked this up. So Frozen Soul and a card like Thunder of Ruler or Threatening Roar actually stack. So hypothetically, if you were to, like, Heavy Storm and my back row was either Thunder or Threatening Roar and Frozen Soul you actually skip your next two battle phases because Thr Thunder of Ruler and Threatening War oh, prevent you from even right. going to the battle phase altogether. Yeah. And then Frozen Soul says, skip your opponent's next battle phase. So it's a neat little way to actually off of something like a board, uh, a back row wipe to be able to get two full turn cycles or four turns for final countdown sake in uh, out of just you taking any damage whatsoever. So that was a really cool thing I learned about this deck. And I didn't, it didn't come up, sadly. I was really hoping it would.
I, uh, I wasn't. Just, like, just <laughs> neat little interactions like that. I don't know why this deck was playing Gores. I feel like I never had a chance to summon this thing. It <laughs> makes it's, sense. It's yeah, kind I, I of a Boku. battle fader. <laughs> kind of. Uh, I don't think there's really anything else you didn't see in here. Yeah, you pretty much saw the rest of the deck. I mean, that's that's Final Countdown, ladies and gentlemen. If you've ever played against this deck before, you already know, like, essentially what you're you know, strapping in for. And that's why this is a deck that people fear. The first two games, it looked pretty bad, in all honesty, because we couldn't even get to Final Countdown to save our life. And post board like joseph mentioned a lot of people were prepared with stuff like the prohibitions uh, a lot of people were playing decree this deck countersides with like msts and heavy storms but if you can't get to countdown then uh it is all downhill so uh very fittingly i will be wearing the shirt of shame next episode as i should be uh for deciding to want to show this abomination off but it, it buddy, feels I feel like, like a, we're actually it feels like a jank deck huh? but like i i really do have to impart upon everyone People were scared as hell of this. It's pretty terrifying. And it's crazy too, because we're actually like moving on, right? We're moving into like the next part of 2012. We're like out of like this like nationals format that we've been talking about and hyping up for the last month or so. And we actually get to like move on to other stuff now, which is kind of exciting. Yeah. So I can't wait to see what we got next. I, I imagine after this exceptionally broken format, we're going to have a really cool, good one. Uh, by the way, does anyone know what comes out in Lord of the Tachyon Galaxy? I mean, is there maybe a <laughs> series of monsters that might cause this to happen again? Mm, I guess people have to find out and see. Yeah. So guys, that's going to wrap it up for another episode. Let's go ahead and shout the patrons as always. So big shout to Shout1317, Moto Cameron Smith, SJ Winchester, Kadok Meatball, Ian Musa, Tomb 0 x 3 Ike Iron Fang, Part 2, Pony Stark, Dan the Med Hoban, Secret Guy, Ole, Yusuf Asano 5, MBT Play, Medolce, Mystic Walk, I Ship, MBT, and Simo, Cole T, Draconic, Rockside, Dolly Wop, Logan, Thomas, Peter Gregory, Thomas Selson, Jordan Coons, Calvin Iron Blades, and Pure Ace, Jesse Wood, Trinur, Guys, and Brother Paul, Chris, Ho, David Liu, Ruxin's Horny Fan, Sky Rose, Dylan Hunter, John Two Base, Extremely Vulgar Man, Brody Eastwood, Day Sir, Carlos DT, Flannel Daddy, Ashlyn Jensen, Give Me Speed or give me death seriously guys please read your cards tc gaming thanks for the sleeves dad matthew brady max mbt bathwater vendor tom russell why read your cards when you can just click buttons ban snatch shield for prog 2021 omar paint french girls like one of your mbts black acre the entire state of indiana these cards we are not the same you drink flat tummy tea i drink m bussy tea mbt fans scare me more than covid simping for simo abbott ygo ethan Steele, and horny bonking mbt fans thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time.